Well, hello uh, to our wonderful audience. I am here today to speak with Diane Walker, who is one of our two artists showing in December at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts. My name is Deborah Rosinski, and I'm executive director with the organization. And Diane has been connected with us and showing with us for a long time, uh, first with photography and later with painting. Uh, but you you have a very multi-faceted um, background with your poetry and playwriting and other forms of writing as well. And um, uh, technology expertise. And I would love to hear you talk about kind of all those things and sort of your path to um, to finding your way to the work that you're doing now that um, we'll have represented in the show. So take it away, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's see. I used to be a high-tech marketing person. So that's where my technology expertise comes from. I worked with Aldous on Photoshop for quite a while and freehand, which I think doesn't exist anymore. It became and, Illustrator. Yeah. <laughs> it was absorbed into Illustrator. <laughs> yeah, I really miss PageMaker, just as a side comment. <laughs> um, and then I went to work for the Episcopal Diocese of Olympia as their communications director. And part of that job was I had to do a newspaper. And so for the newspaper, I learned photography. I'd always been a writer, but I learned photography and um, I've always been a graphic designer, so I designed a new logo for the newspaper and illustrations for a lot of the stuff. And I retired from that job in 1996 and moved to Shaw Island. Hmm. And um, there's not a lot to do on Shaw Island. So I took with me the camera, another version of the camera that I had used while working for the diocese. And I started taking pictures of driftwood. <laughs> And um, I, uh, this will sound pretty bizarre, but I was on a ferry with Bill Gates's mom because Bill Gates' parents own a place on Shaw Island. And I was going through the pictures that I'd just gotten back from the developer in Anacortes. And she said, wow, these are amazing. You should take these to a gallery. She even told me which gallery to take them to in Friday Harbor. <laughs> so I did. And they said yes. And so then I started doing photography. And we moved to Bainbridge in 2000, 2001, 2001, I think. And um, I juried into Bainbridge Arts and Crafts and I was regularly showing photography, some black and white, some boats um, until 2012 when I was in an exhibit and um, Christopher Matthew was also in the exhibit or in some other part of the gallery. And he had this gorgeous painting up over the, what was then the desk of the gallery. And I liked it so much. It was both abstract and not abstract at the same time, it looked like a beach. And so I called him up. I got his number from David and called him up and said, do you take students? <laughs> And he said, yes, but um, I cried my way through two classes because I was a beginning painter. And he finally said, you know, you might want to work on your own for a while. <laughs> so I turned my daughter's, my college age daughter's bedroom into a studio and started painting and just kept on painting and more painting. Um, through all of that, I have stayed with photography. I still post a photo and a poem on Facebook and on a blog every day. And so that's my life. <laughs> well, you're incredibly prolific. I, I was um, very happy to get to visit your studio some months back. And I, I was so impressed by the quantity of work <laughs> that you <laughs> produced and 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 the quality as well um and just well, some of that's because of covid so when covid started and i was stuck at home all day long i decided i would paint every day i would spend at least an hour in the studio every day and i wanted to spend that time 
learning more about painting, learning new techniques, trying new subjects, trying different colors, just pushing my limits. So a lot of what you see in there, there's even more in our garage with um, failed attempts at new techniques. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff around. Your energy level is impressive. <laughs> 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 And uh, yeah, we're excited to show your work alongside Carl Morgan's kinetic sculptures as well. And um, it, it's going to be a great show. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you, when when you pick up a brush and you start to work, do you do you have a preconceived idea in mind typically, or do you just kind of go with the moment or some some combination? Does it vary for you? Yes. Yeah, my work covers a lot of ground. Um, the blog is called Contemplative Photography. And so I do reading every morning and I meditate and then I look through whatever photographs I've been taking lately and whichever one speaks to me is the one I post and then I write a poem about it. And somehow that whole process leaves me open in some way. So when I go up into the studio, which is the next thing I do, um, it uh, whatever happened that morning sort of plays through onto the canvas. Hmm. And so what I've learned over time is if I plan a painting, it usually turns out really badly. And so it's easier to just walk up the stairs and pick a color and start and see what happens. And as you can see from the exhibit, um, different things happen at different times. The first time, this was a really obvious example, is there are two paintings hanging at the Bainbridge Island Fire Department Station on Madison. Mm -hmm. And both of those, in those days, I was always putting down, as Christopher Matthew taught me, a sort of hot red and black and yellow background. And then I would apply blues and greens, which are my preferred colors, over that. So this was the time of the wildfires in 2015. And um, we were all aware of those wildfires. They were really decimating um, Eastern Washington. And I put down my red background and put my black and yellow over it. And I tried putting blue over it and I couldn't. It looked terrible. So I kept wiping off the blue and I finally gave up and decided, okay, this is just supposed to be red, black and yellow. And um, I realized it was because the wildfires were taking over so much of my consciousness at that point in time that I decided, okay, let's um, <laughs> throw uh, an auction. And I invited all my painter friends to uh, contribute paintings to the auction to raise money for the wildfire victims. Mm. And so we did manage to waste quite a bit of money for the wildfire victims, but my paintings were really big, so they didn't sell. So I gave them to the fire department at their request, actually. So You're working all in acrylics, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've tried other... Um, I haven't tried oils, but I'm terrible at watercolor. I've never been able to do watercolor. I've taken multiple watercolor classes and I fail miserably every time. Um, but I do do some collage and multimedia stuff. So but yes, I'm happiest in acrylics. My sweet zone seems to be 24 by 36, but that may be just because that was what Christopher Matthew had me buy for my first canvas. <laughs> and uh, a number of your pieces incorporate uh, line work that looks like lettering or, or script, but- Aesthetic writing. Yeah. I, um, you have another artist in your stable named Vicki Harrison. Mm -hmm. And Vicki taught a class at the Winslow Art Center on aesthetic writing, which I took. And so um, that does seem to be something that continues to emerge from time to time in my paintings. Yeah, I, I like the um, kind of contrast of that and the fields of color and um, the way you combine those elements. No, thanks. And so you were based in Bainbridge for a long time. And then was it around four years ago that you and your husband moved to Port Townsend? Is that right? 
Yes, um, we actually signed on the house in 2019, just before COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And so we, it, due to a variety of issues with getting everything ready for departure and ready to move into, we didn't actually move into the house until the end of July of 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's been wonderful, actually. It was a really good move to make. Um, we were living in the woods on Bainbridge, and we are very happy to be able to see mountains and water again. So, Yeah, it's a lovely spot where you are. Yeah, we feel really lucky to have found the house. <laughs> um, now, you've written some plays in the past. Are you, you still doing anything like that, or is it mostly the um, poetry that... Um takes up your writing brain more well recently. the 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 poetry is every day so that's obviously a thing they're really short poems they're usually only five to ten lines um the playwriting um I was for a while on the board of Island Theater and uh when I began with that I was acting but I wrote my first play when I was in college and so I I started applying to the 10 minute play festival. I can't seem to focus longer than 10 minutes, but um, so during COVID there's this little um, play company in Buffalo, Green Buffalo Productions, I think. And every week they would on Friday afternoon send out play prompts and they would give you um, characters, uh, setting and props and you were to turn out a 10 minute play by Sunday afternoon. And so I really got in the habit that just became my weekends of writing 10 minute plays. And so I actually produced a book of 20 plays and I could probably produce another book of 20 plays, but they stopped sending out the prompts um, about six months ago. So I haven't been writing any plays lately. <laughs> Those prompts are really helpful. I know there's all kinds of versions of them now, like Inktober and uh print print december and you know different groups um of artists who work in different mediums uh seem to have developed these and it's so great you know i think so many artists feel the lack if they've gone through you know a university training background um in the arts that community that you have in the school format you know, when you're out in the world after, you don't have the same kind of built-in support systems. Yes. I think it's really valuable, these these kinds of um, things that people just organically started. <laughs> so, yeah. and it, I've been actually really, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. I've, I've been really um, fortunate when I moved here, Vicki Harrison is actually a neighbor of mine. And she mentioned to me that the Port Ludlow Art League had a group called uh, Abstract something. I can't remember what they are. But anyway, it's a group of abstract artists who meet every week. And at that point it was COVID. So we were meeting on Zoom. And every week we would meet and share whatever we were working on at the time. And sometimes we'd have assignments that we'd all do together. And um, sometimes we would just bring in what we were working on. And that has been enormously supportive. I just, that's part of the reason I'm so prolific because I feel like I have to take something new in every week. <laughs> and now we meet um, three times a month on Zoom, and then we have one in-person meeting in Port Ludlow, and mm -hmm. I ended up on the board of the Port Ludlow Art League. And <laughs> but it's been great just having all those people working together on art. Yeah, it makes such a difference. Um, I was living in Tennessee before moving to Washington, and I was fortunate to be welcomed into a group of women who were all fiber artists except for me. I, I was their first non-fiber artist because I worked <laughs> class but they they welcomed me in and I was busy with full-time work but still it was great even if I didn't have anything to show to just talk about art and ideas and you know just have that kind of time set aside regularly to to get back into that space <laughs> yeah it's wonderful and of course the conversation always goes a little more into the theoretical as the friendships evolve. So 
Mm -hmm. Do you do your photography um, still? If if you're still posting things, you're continuing as a photographer. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yes. I post a picture of a sunset every night there is one. And so um, those are always my cover shots on Facebook. And, um, or I do sunrises sometimes because we get both. We're really fortunate. And I like to share those. It's just the colors are so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's, you know, when I'm driving around in my car, if I see something, I pull out my phone and take a picture. So yesterday I had to leave pretty early in the morning and the sun was just coming up and there was a lot of fog in the air and, I drove by a cemetery and the light was just perfect. So I posted a picture of the cemetery with the light streaming through. And that's kind of how it emerges. It's whatever calls to me when I'm driving around. I don't actually go out looking for photographs anymore. But it's more just in the life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a incredible photographic eye. Um, I I got a little more familiar recently with your photography work and I, I just think your images are really strong. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I love doing it. It really calls to me, but um, part of the reason I switched to painting was I just couldn't make any money with photography because mm. by the time you map them and frame them and put glass over them, um, I think it's once everyone had a cell phone with a camera in it, it was harder for people to get that some photographs might be better than others. Mm-hmm. And so it didn't seem to make sense anymore. And I got very excited about painting. So, <laughs> yeah, the cell phone has really changed so much, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing in both good ways and bad ways, I think. Yeah, yeah, kind of a double edged sword. Yeah. Well, it, is there anything you'd like people to know? more specifically about your painting body of work or um or anything you'd like them to come away with when they see your your work i'm remembering um a time when i hung my paintings at bainbridge arts uh excuse me bainbridge performing arts and at the time i was in a play with uh, a girl who was 11 or 12 years old and she was looking at my paintings and she came to me and she said, I really like your paintings. I can see whatever I want to see in them. Mm. And I think I think that's what I hope for is that each person will come away with whatever they come away with. They'll see whatever they're meant to see in the painting and it won't necessarily be what I saw or what I painted or what someone else sees. But I like to think that... Um, Uh, For the most part, they calm and comfort people, but they also sort of awaken a little bit of imagination and curiosity. Mm -hmm. That's probably it. (laughs) Great. I I do think that you achieve that in these pieces, very much so. Uh, How many years have you been connected to the... Um, I think I juried in in 2002. Mm. That's a good long time. <laughs> yeah, a good long time. 20, ooh, 20 years. Wow. Right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's kind of amazing, isn't it? I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> it's a good long history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. it's been a joy working with you guys. I love your gallery. I've always loved your gallery. I just think it's beautiful. So I'm delighted to be in it. Well, I'm... I feel privileged to get to do this work and to talk to folks like yourself and, and, you know, have the excuse to ask you questions about what you're doing and why and learn (laughs) from that, (laughs) you know, as as a recovering introvert, you know, this is, (laughs) I can be nosy (laughs) and learn. I am not a recovering introvert. I'm a a hardcore introvert. So (laughs) doing this is really stressful. (laughs) I've learned to be more extroverted over time, but I'm sort of right on the dividing line. <laughs> oh, that's funny because I was always on the dividing line too. And so I would tell people I was an introvert and they would go, wait a minute, you're <laughs> on stage, you're conducting workshops, you're leading retreats. What is going on here? I but, mean, we develop these skills over time, I think. Yes, one so, does. 
Yeah. And I think COVID has definitely reinforced the introvert in me. So now yeah. it's very really hard to get me to leave the house. <laughs> yeah, I was finding that too. <laughs> <laughs> Although we have so much more exploring to do living here, you know, because because we came right in the middle of the worst. Right. Event. We couldn't. Really- and that's how we feel about Port Townsend, too. I don't know anything about Port Townsend because the whole time we've been here, it's been COVID. I don't even go to movie theaters or restaurants or mm. um, and I went to an opening last night at Northwind for the Small Expressions show. Mm. And I didn't stay very long because there were a lot of people in there. And I kept thinking, well, you know, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> Yeah, the shifting landscape of COVID. It, it's just hard to know how to behave yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, well, I got my last booster, so I'm as boosted as is possible. So that helps. Yes, me. Likewise. But I keep thinking, you know, if it doesn't snow and people come to my opening, which would be nice. Yeah. How will I feel in a room full of people? So. Right. <laughs> Well, Diane, thank you for taking the time to talk to me and for sharing your work with us um, and the public. (laughs) Well, thank you for asking. (laughs) Please stop in soon to see new kinetic sculpture pieces by Carl Morgan and new paintings by Diane Walker in the gallery on view from December 2nd through December 31st. We hope to see you.